Good morning. morning. Welcome to worship, everyone. And uh, thanks to our worship team this morning. We've got Julian over here on the the piano and Max and Paul and Kurt and Pastor Wayne and Dennis. Uh, What team be? So thank you for leading us in song. Uh, Please take a look at your uh, splash pad, different things going on, and take a t- take a moment to um, pass the water source book down, please, and make sure you sign those, and it's a way for us to kind of get to know each other, and uh, just kind of pass them down. <clears throat> There's a little sheet for prayer requests in there, too, if you ever want us to uh, pray for someone, and then the ushers will, ushers will bring those up to us um, for the prayers. <clears throat> We're looking for more baked goods. So uh, May 20th, got a bake sale, craft sale, and plant and tree giveaway. Uh, a lot going on next Saturday, and it's in uh, support for, of the uh, Social Justice for All God's Children Committee project. So uh, we invite you to that. It goes from 9 to 2. Next Sunday, um, it's, it, we're, we're looking for some folks to help with... Uh, Road section and living water sponsors. If you'd like to do that with us, we're going to hit the highway. So we put the, make the place look nice. We're also looking for food fest parking volunteers. Uh, put the vest on. That's my favorite part. You get to wear a cool vest. People can't, can't miss you. A couple important meetings. Um, if you'd like to uh, participate in looking at uh, potentially hosting a vacation Bible school, uh, for kids this, uh, this coming summer. We're going to have an interest meeting on the 17th this, this Wednesday at 5.30 uh, to kind of brainstorm. Another big event this Wednesday is the H2O meeting uh, for senior high. Uh, we'll say grades 8 through 12, since 8th graders are basically like ninth graders almost. And uh, we're going to have very uh, church-like activity, Nerf Wars. So we invite you to bring your Nerf things if you want to participate in that, it should be a big event. Uh, Fall Fest is going to be coming again this year. We're going to meet next Sunday, 1010. Anybody who's interested in that, talk to Danetta Walbeck. Finally, uh, there's an event coming to town called Celebrate Minnesota. Where's my poster? Here it is. And you might have heard about this thing. It's something that the churches of the area are working on together, which is a beautiful thing when brothers and sisters dwell in harmony of all different kinds of Christians. And uh, so we got some awesome bands coming, including one of my favorite bands of all time, Switchfoot, who are just, who are just the best. Chris Tomlin also, we sing a lot of his music. He's going to be down there at the Lake George um, area. We're going to have a big stage. And Zach Williams, plus a really cool speaker by the name of Mike Silva, is going to be there uh, talking about Jesus. So um, they, we're, we need volunteers there's a, there's a sign-up thing you can find um, that you'll see on our website, website and Facebook page for, for helping out. Uh, there are all kinds of different things that we need help with, from parking to uh, providing stuff for kids and so on. It's a community-wide um, effort, and uh, you can participate in that too by looking there. Any other announcements this morning? Got, uh, did I already say there's a Fall Fest meeting? I think I might have. Yes. Okay, there, don't miss the Fall Fest meeting, too. <laughs> May 21st. And Leanne. Yes, we have a All right, we'll look forward to the next one. Who knows what might happen? (laughs) All right. Well, let's stand and uh, sing our opening song, um, which is the Day of Resurrection.
Alleluia. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. We will now sing the song of praise. You may be seated. the Aeropostas and said, Athenians, I see how extremely religious you are in every way. For as I went through the city and looked carefully at the object of your worship, I found among them an altar with the inscription to an unknown God. What therefore you worship as unknown, this I proclaim to you. The God who made the world and everything in it, he who is the Lord of heaven and earth, does not live in shrines made by human hands, nor is he served by human hands as though he needed anything, since he himself gives to all mortals life and breath and all things. From one ancestor he made all nations to inhibit the, inhabit the earth, and he allotted the times of their existence and the boundaries of the places where they would live, so they would, not, so they would search for God and perhaps grope him and find him though indeed he is not far from each one of us. For in him we live and move and have our being, as even some of your own poets have said. For we too are his offspring. Since we are God's offspring, we ought not to think that the deity is like gold or silver or stone, an image formed by the art and imagination of mortals. While God has overlooked the times of human ignorance, now he commands all people everywhere to repent, because he has fixed a day on which he will have the world judged in righteousness by a man whom he has appointed, and one this is, he has given assurance to all by raising him from the dead. Here ends the reading. Understanding down in my heart, down in my heart, down in my heart. I've got the peace that passes understanding down in my heart. Down in my heart to stay. All right, this time we invite any kids who are here. Come on down. Oh, there's some kids right here. All right. First one here, great. Hi, good morning. What do I have here with me today? Flower. A flower. Yeah. What do we like about flowers? They smell yummy. They smell yummy. <laughs> yes, they do. You want to smell it? There you go. Want to smell the flower? It does smell nice. Yeah, you know, carnations do too. Uh, what else do we know about flowers? They look pretty. They look pretty. How do they grow? By a seed. By a seed, you plant them, and then they grow. By a seed grows up. What what uh, what can you give them so they grow more? Water. Water. Yeah, you know, and that's kind of like if there's water, it goes up the stem, right? Mm -hmm. And it's this amazing thing that happens where water all goes all the way to the flower, and then the flower is pretty. That. That's kind of like God's love. God's love uh, starts like in, in hearing about Jesus and how Jesus loves me, Jesus loves us, and it flows up in, to us into our lives and makes us happy because we know <clears throat> that Jesus loves us. Moms are like that too. The, when moms love kids and so on, it also gives them life and happiness, but 
even more importantly than that, <clears throat> God's love helps us to grow. So let's pray. <clears throat> Excuse me. Dear God, thank you for your love, which helps us grow. Amen. Thanks for coming up here. Um, have a piece of candy for yourself. You can give one to somebody else too. You want to take another one? There you go. Good. Take another one and give it away. Gospel according to John, the 15th chapter, beginning with verse 9. Jesus said, As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. I have said these things to you so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. No one has greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. I do not call you servants any longer because the servant does not know what the master is doing. But I have called you friends, because I have made known to you everything that I have heard from my Father. You did not choose me, but I chose you. And I appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last, so that the Father will give you whatever you ask him in my name. I am giving you these commands, so that you may love one another. The gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Dear friends in Christ, grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. In the gospel of John, in the reading today, our Lord says to us, Jesus says, <clears throat> As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Abide in my love. I have said these things to you so that your joy may be complete. Do you have joy? Got joy? Do you have joy in your hearts? You know, <clears throat> when uh, my friend was a little kid, his mom taught him this song. I got the joy, 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 joy down. The one that we sing sometimes, you know, that we've been singing here. My mom had this thing. She'd come in and she'd sing this to them 
as they were just getting up. They're like, oh, mom. <laughs> My mother had this little song that she would sing to us as we were waking up. She'd come in, she'd open the shades, open the windows. You're like, ah. And she'd say, get up, get up, and hear the birdies sing. She said, okay, mom. But Mike, his, he and his big brothers, these big guys, she'd come in there, got the joy, and she made them sing it. <laughs> and she wouldn't stop until they responded. Um, I got the joy, 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 joy down in my heart. And then they had to go, where? <laughs> down in my heart, where? Down in my heart, joy, 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 down in my heart, where? <laughs> so finally they were up and, and running around. It's a classic. There's this common theme <clears throat> in the Bible of joy, particularly in the New Testament. There's this interesting uh, juxtaposition or dichotomy, they might call it, between happiness and joy. Happiness and joy aren't necessarily the same things. Happiness depends on your circumstances. Things like the, the, the weather or how well you golfed. Like golf, <clears throat> I can hit the ball a long ways. It just doesn't go where I want it to go. Some days are good, some days not so great. Um, it might depend on how well that goes. Happiness might depend on how it goes at work on a given day or how you're feeling, whether you're having a good day or a bad day. Um, circumstances, whether people are treating you well, uh, justly and fairly or not, or if everything is lining up, you know, so that your ducks are in a row. Happiness tends to depend a lot on those kind of things. <clears throat> but you kind of know inside that that's not always going to be perfect. I mean, we, we've heard that before, that life's not fair. We get that too. But it is just a, a, a truth that we won't be happy if it's all depending on everything going just according to Hoyle and just going really well. However, a lot of people live their lives by this world's definition of finding peace and finding fulfillment through these things. This dream of, you know, getting everything just right, every single detail, and then we'll have great fulfillment. That's the way the world pitches it to us. But you and I know inside that there's folly to that, that it's not perfect because we know that life's not fair. <clears throat> and the truth of the matter is we're never going to get to that perfection with everything working out on this side of heaven <laughs> because we live in a dark world. Sometimes an unjust world sometimes, a world of bad weather, a world where you're not always going to shoot par. We live in a world where people break up, where people spread gossip and rumors that are unfounded, where people are on power kicks, they play control, control games, where people divide unnecessarily, where people don't love each other, where they'll have hearts of stone. So if your happiness depends on all of a sudden the world stopping and all those things just lining up just, just perfectly, you know, we, we just don't have the potential this side of heaven to be there. So you'll never be happy if it depends on that. You'll just never experience it. But joy is deeper than that. Joy in your heart <clears throat> biblically speaking, is something that Jesus wants you to have and to not have a dependent on outward circumstances. So he says, I came that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. It starts with knowing the love of Jesus and abiding in his, in his love. And then you begin to know lasting joy. Joy depends not on your circumstances, but on relationships. Relationships with God and with other people. Joy doesn't depend 
so much on how you golfed <laughs> or on the fact that you, it's rather on the fact that you maybe spent some time on a great day with some friends. You had a great time with them. Doesn't depend on everybody treating you fairly. Joy doesn't. Depends, it depends more on having loving relationships in the midst of imperfect ones, imperfect friends. It doesn't depend on everything going perfectly for you at work. Depends on the fact that maybe you have this bond with coworkers, a common purpose. That's what gives you life. It could depend on your relationship with God, relationships with other people. It's deeper than happiness. Happiness in your heart depends on getting everything right and worked out in life. Joy, again, depends on the fact that in the midst of the world, you'll never get there, but you can still be filled with joy because you're in the Lord. You're still in this relationship with God. The prophet Nehemiah <clears throat> says in 8.10, don't be dejected and sad, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. The Bible teaches that joy is to be found in your relationships with God and with other people with other people. And here's where some of you are going, oh, great. And now you want me to think about my mom because it's Mother's Day. And maybe for a significant portion of our church people here, this is the case for you, that it actually makes it very complicated and, and brings some hard, hard feelings inside. But it's not God's original intention. And if that's the case for you, I hope that this day you'll take a, a step toward healing. For your joy depends on your relationship with God and with other loved ones that God puts around you. For some, thinking about Mother's Day and so on, you know, having joy on the same day comes quite easily and you can't wait for family gatherings and so on on this day. Your heart is filled with thanksgiving and joy, and you can hardly contain it. God has blessed you, if that's you. That joy is based on that relationship that's there. But life gets complicated sometimes. Whatever the case, God wants you to have joy in all circumstances and to grow in your relationship and with God in that way. Did you know... Um, the, the, the person who created the concept of Mother's, of mother's Day uh, was somebody named name of Anna Jarvis uh, in 1907. Um, the first unofficial Mother's Day was held at the request of Anna Jarvis of Philadelphia, 1907, to honor her mother, who was a women's rights pioneer and advocate. She had died a couple years earlier, and Anna Jarvis created a day of simple, solemn recognition. She asked that single carnations, her mother's favorite flower, be worn on this day. In 1914, after years of letter-writing campaigns, public meetings, uh, Anna Jarvis finally persuaded President Woodrow Wilson to declare the second Sunday in May as a national holiday, which we know as Mother's Day. The story. The celebration grew from small, quiet gatherings and letters to mothers to more lavish affairs where living mothers were showered with all the love that money could buy. Jarvis was outraged. I wanted a day of sentiment, not profit, she said. <laughs> Although she approved of tributes paid to living mothers as well as those deceased, she objected to replacing thoughtful sentimentality with mass-produced goods. Amongst her strongest dislikes were ready-made greeting cards, kind of like the one I sent to my mom. <laughs> she said, and she's going and saying, it's a poor excuse for the letter you are too lazy to write. <laughs> I wish I could have met her. I did write kind of a letter in my mom's card, too. But Anna Jarvis trying to recapture the original purity and simplicity of a holiday created from a, a daughter's desire 
to honor her mother. Mother's Day isn't just for moms who are alive. In fact, it was created by a mother, who, a daughter, that is, whose mother had passed away two years before she even presented the idea. Some of you may <clears throat> dread this day. It's a hard day because it's the first Mother's Day you've ever had without being able to pick up a phone or sit down and have a meal with your mom. On the other, other hand, maybe this is about your 33rd Mother's Day like that, and it's still hard. By its original intention, Mother's Day wasn't so much a day for moms. It was a day for kids to honor their moms. It was for kids to think about the moms we all have. And so it's a day <clears throat> for each and every one of us to find the joy that God wants to fill us up with. The joy, 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 that is to be found in relationships, good and bad. The joy that is to be found in knowing that we're securely in this relationship with our Heavenly Father. I hope you'll write that letter or longer note in a card sometime, if you haven't done so already. Or at least just write a few extra words <laughs> that you'll go back to the original intent of Mother's Day. I think that's what God would have us to do, to rediscover or discover for the first time the joy that God has for us. For the joy of the Lord is our strength, to know that strength, to know that joy. I hope you do the same because there's joy in that for you. Jesus says, abide in my love because I want my joy to be in you and for that joy to be complete. Thank God for mothers. Uh, we worship and celebrate. And that's what Mother's Day was created to be, a day for kids to remember their moms. I think God would want us to do that today so we can have the joy. To God be the glory now and forever. Amen.
Please join me in the affirmation of faith. In Christ, you have heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation. We believe in him and are marked with the seal of the promised Holy Spirit. Living together in trust and hope, we confess our faith. We believe that he conquered death. We believe in the resurrection, that he's coming back. He's coming back again. Build yourselves up on the most holy faith. Pray in the Holy Spirit. Keep yourselves in the love of God. Look forward to the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ. If anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. Everything old has passed away. Behold, everything has become new. God has given us the ministry of reconciliation. Therefore, let us be reconciled to God and to one another. God of birth, God of joy, God of life. We come to you as people hungry for good news. We have been so dead to miracles that we have missed the world's rebirth. We have preoccupied ourselves and have overlooked the joy you offer us. Forgive us, gracious God. Open our eyes and our hearts to receive your gift. Open our lips and our hands to share it with all humanity. Please take a moment of silent reflection. As far as the east is from the west, so far has God removed our sins from us. In mercy, Jesus Christ has forgiven or given us to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. In Jesus, we are made new, we are made clean, we are made whole. Remembering you are a child of God, please make a sign of the cross on your forehead. United in the hope and joy of the resurrection, let us pray for the church, the world, and all in need. God, our faithful companion, you promised to never leave us and to send your spirit to guide us in wisdom and truth. Send your people into the world to serve as mirrors that reflect and magnify your love. Lord, in your mercy. All the earth sings praises to you. Grant your care to the creatures, plants, and places that are suffering, and equip us to respond to their song. Make us agents of restoration and refreshment for all your beloved creation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You hold us in your loving care. We pray, Lord, this day for mothers and mother figures. Console all who long to be mothers, children estranged from their mothers, anyone grieving the death of a mother, and mothers who have lost a child. Support all for whom this day is difficult. Lord, in your mercy. Lord God, we pray for your hand of healing upon those we lift up before you today. We pray for Bruce Mobauer, Mark Thorson, and those we name before you in our hearts. Restore them to health. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
Almighty God, you give life and breath to all things. We give thanks for those who have died, who we remember in our hearts today. Sustain us by your love until we join the saints in glory. Lord, in your mercy, in our prayer, rejoicing in the victory of Christ's resurrection, we lift our prayers and our praise to you, almighty and eternal God, through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us share God's peace, a sign of God's peace with one another this day. Peace. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us pray together. Living God, your Son made himself known to the disciples in the breaking of bread and the sharing of the cup. Open the eyes of our faith so that we who share this meal may know the hope and joy given to us through the resurrection of Jesus. Amen. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory. Forever and ever. Amen. I invite those who are helping to serve to come forward. Um, and we welcome everyone to the table, uh, Lord's table, here knowing that with the bread and the wine, <clears throat> we receive the body and blood of Jesus for the strengthening of our faith and for the forgiveness of our sins. There's grape juice available for those who request. Uh, we also have gluten-free and corn-free wafers for those who request. The table is ready. We come and eat. Amen. The greatest thing in all my life is knowing you. The greatest thing
The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. The Lord be with you. Living God, as the disciples ate and drank with their risen Lord, we have been nourished with the very presence of Christ. Through this meal, may we be strengthened to keep your word and to proclaim the power of your saving love. In Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Receive the blessing. Now the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Let's stand and we, as we sing our blessing song.
Now go in peace and serve the risen Lord. Thanks be to God. <laughs>